Waves are a disturbance. Um, they're usually originated by some kind of source or initiator which disturbs an elastic medium. By an elastic medium, I mean a medium such that when you in some way distort it or, or try to uh, move it away from its rest position, there's created a restoring force which tries to bring the matter back to where it was. But then moving back to where it was, it overshoots, and now the restoring force tries to bring it back a second time to the middle. And in this overshooting process, creates a mechanism so that the disturbance propagates through or along the medium. Here I have a medium, uh, which is a slinky here, uh, suspended. Um, and uh, we can disturb this medium to create the uh, disturbance that moves through it, the wave, by uh, shaking it from side to side. As that happens, you can see that the disturbance moves along the medium from one end to the other. You can also see that that disturbance carries energy, carries kinetic energy. Because as I start uh, moving it down here, pretty soon I have this uh, plate at the end that starts to move. It now has the kinetic energy that's been carried to it by the disturbance. Observe that in this uh, process of moving the kinetic energy from one place to another, the matter of the medium, the little piece of metal which makes up the slinky, is not moving from here down to the end of the slinky. The medium itself is just moving in a relatively uh, local area back and forth. It's the disturbance which moves from one end of the slinky to the other, and with it, it carries kinetic energy from one place to another, even though the medium itself moves in a relatively small space. There are two kinds of waves that we can illustrate with this slinky. In the one case, if we disturb the medium so that it moves back and forth this way, the little pieces of metal of the slinky jiggling back and forth in, along that line, and the disturbance then moves along that same line that the jiggling is occurring along, then the wave is said to be a compression wave, in the case of the compression of the slinky, or a longitudinal wave. I can create it by uh, moving the medium back and forth along this direction. And you can see that a disturbance moves now along the slinky from one end to, another, to the other. That kind of wave is a longitudinal wave, or in this case, because the medium compresses and then uncompresses, it's also called a compression wave. There's a second way to create a disturbance that moves along the slinky that's of interest to us, and that's to move the medium to the side rather than moving it along the direction of the disturbance. If the matter of the medium moves back and forth this way and the disturbance moves that way so that they're perpendicular to one another, the wave is said to be a transverse wave or a shear wave in this particular case. So we can create a wave by moving the medium side to side like that, the medium now moving back and forth this way, and the disturbance moving in the direction perpendicular to that. That's a shear wave or a transverse wave. There's a third kind of wave that moves through a medium, but for that I have to have another piece of apparatus. Um, the third kind of wave that moves through a medium is called a torsion wave. And for that, I have to move from the slinky to another piece of apparatus.